All right, so uh, welcome everybody to the emergency meeting of the Conway Select Board. What's today's date? The 13th. January 13th. Yeah. January 13th at 11 a.m. On the agenda is to discuss the flood remediation from the Pine Hill Slope and um, a possible vote on uh, on uh, um, procuring services to unplug, unplug the drainage pipe um, on, uh, between 12 River Street and 14 River Street. Uh, call the meeting to order. Um, I'll note all select board members are present, um, as is the town administrator. So, um, and I also note I will be recusing myself from deliberations in this matter um, uh, due to the fact that I am the owner of 12 River Street. So, um, so I mean, I, gu I guess I'll start with a little bit of background there. Um, the the uh, <clears throat> the stream that goes from the post office and terminates um, at the corner on my property between 12 and 14 River Street is completely plugged. It is not 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 a not a not no water is going through, and when it is plugged, it diverts to the basement, my basement, and my neighbor's basement at 14 River Street. Um, and it has been, we've been running transfer pumps to, to for the stream. Now it's going directly into the grate underneath um, 116. Um, and there's another fire department transfer pump that is pumping my basement right now, uh, also on the route 116. And these are not tenable long-term solutions. Um, the, the, um, the, the, the remedy for this, both the, the fire department has attempted to unblock the drain. Uh, plumbers, uh, Chris and Kenny have been out to look at it. it the, the blockage is at least four feet into the drain. It appears to be quite lengthy. Um, it is uh, silt and leaves and sticks, and there may or Uh, sizable too in there um and uh, uh and i did make contact with mike fabiano at Mastod district one he 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 is many of us remember the name of francisca hemmings um who was the contact um that veronique established a good relationship with um at Mastod. she works for directly underneath mike fabiano mike fabiano is the district operations engineer and he has 100% um, responsibility and duty of, uh, of allocating work and uh, allocating resources. <clears throat> and um, he sent a crew out yesterday to attempt to unblock the plug uh, because it is interfering with the, the safety of the traveling public on Route 116 and uh, the, the overflow from it. So, um, and they, but it, they were unable to do so because they lack the specialized equipment that is required. And he also sent a crew in the middle of the night. There was a crew on duty because of the storm last night. They were on duty from midnight till 9 a.m. And they came here sometime between 2 and 3 a.m. And um, my neighbor across the street, Tad Dan Danielson, actually did speak to them. And they said that to him that they were unable to resolve the blockage with the equipment they had. The problem is that the equipment that's required is a specialized vacuum truck. Um, and although each district of MassDOT has one of those, our district, District 1, their vacuum truck is out of uh, operation. It, it, it is in for repairs. And in their, but from what Mike says, there are extensive repairs that are required. Unfortunately, and unfortunate, and when I was just yesterday or the day before driving down in Northampton, the Northampton yard, which is District Two, has a beautiful brand new one sitting in the parking lot, but District One cannot use their theirs. And um, uh, Mike said that he, he cannot get permission to use that one, and that for him to requisition 
uh, con uh, uh, they uh, they would to, to pr privately procure one from a contractor for usage is a whole lengthy process that requires permissions from Boston um, and bidding it out and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, uh, you know, the, and the, the um, so, so I, so I took it upon myself to call around the private contractors. JS Ray has the required equipment and the expertise to run it. They were out here yesterday morning to give an estimate, and the estimate was three to four thousand. Um, they estimate it's an eight-hour job, uh, and but that if it is on a weekend, um, it would be time and a half, which would make it a five to six, whatever, four to six thousand dollar job. So, um, and the um, both Veronique and I have consulted with the town attorney about the propriety of the town paying for um, uh, this service. And um, the attorney did, you know, she said under the circumstances of all that's gone down um, and with the, the fire department in particular, um, uh, each and every member of it when they were here last, the, the, the amount, the, the stream behind the house is just part of the, the flood network. And you, you all might remember the, the maps, the topographical map that, that FERTOG report on the Pine Hill Slope showed us. And the, it's all so much of the water that ends up here. And also the silt and the debris is being carried down from directly below uh, Upper Baptist Hill Road. Um, and that the road construction that's taken place there resulted in the removal of the berm to the extent that there was a berm on the southern side of Upper Baptist Hill Road, um, which allows more to flow over the road. And also, Ron did fix the drainage outlet on the north side of Upper Baptist Hill Road, but that drainage outlet just goes under the road and empties into a downhill slope um, between Lori Block's house and uh, Gilman, Donna Gilman's house. And that is where the stream starts that ends up directly in my backyard, um, joining the other stream. So there's sort of a confluence of things going on. There's the, the excess water that crosses the town road or, or in order to not cross the town road is, ba is basically put into my basement. Um, and a neighbor's basement and along with the silt and the debris. And if y'all want to take a, a walk down that slope, you, it's just a wreck. You just, you can just see the silt lining it. Um, and so it's the uh, unanimous opinion of like all the members of the fire department that have gone up and taken a look that a lot of this problem, most of this problem that we're dealing with and the cause of the blockage and the excess silt has been from um, from water from the town roads. So, um, and, and the overall failure to have a more extensive uh, stormwater drainage system, the blockage of the stormwater drainage system in, at the triangle in front of us, so that all the water from Pine Hill uh, Road, um, instead of going into that and then into Emerson Hollow, um, and in, into the South River, like it's designed to do, it just goes right over that, right down into that same downhill slope between Lori Blocks and down down to Gilman, and ends up at, on in, in here. So, um, so given all of that, um, uh, our town attorney said that it is appropriate that that basically this drainage system behind my house and behind my neighbor's house and the neighbor next to her, Billy Pease. Um, basically right now is functioning as part of the town stormwater drainage system. And um, it is, although there is an anti-aid amendment, um, it, an anti-private, anti-aid amendment, it's called in the state constitution, which forbids the use of tax dollars to benefit private citizens. There are, as we've discussed before, there are multiple exceptions to that, including public safety and public benefit. Um, and 
Um, Donna agrees that both of those exceptions apply, or she, she didn't agree, she stated to me that they did, and that it is perfectly appropriate for the town to, um, you know, just uh, put the bill for the hiring out of the vacuum pump truck from J.S. Ray, um, um, because we can't wait for the state to do it, because it's, um, well, I mean, the, the transfer pumps need to be filled with gas every hour, 24 hours a day. And it's not a sustainable burden for the homeowners. Um, and it's a completely unknown time frame for, as to how this, when the state would be able to do it. I would love for this, I truly tried to get the state to do it. And they sent out two crews with various equipment, um, but none of the equipment could reach the plug. And the plug was too extensive for them to deal with. Um, and I tried and we all tried and neighbors tried and friends tried with all kinds of stuff and ideas and nothing would work. So, I mean, I'm always extremely reluctant for the town to pay any bills. If somebody else could conceivably pay for them, especially the state. Um, but that's the situation that, that we're in. The good news though, and this is sort of related to this is that, um, Mike Fabiano was one of the four mascot engineers that was out here in August after the July floods that took a look at this whole drainage system and particularly the, the drainage ditch and the stream, et cetera. And at that time made a commitment to really look into this with the idea of the state themselves digging up the drainage ditch and replacing it, the drainage pipe and replacing it because the existing drainage pipe is from sometime between 1859 and 1875 and it's clay and it's probably busted in places and um one of the problems of course is that the state has no idea where the drainage pipe goes to and that was what we were initially waiting on the dye tests um which has never taken place but that's kind of irrelevant at this point the but what Mike Fabiano did do is they're sending out, they have a fancy new piece of equipment. Um, he said it's very expensive. It's a truck with multiple employees that are required to run it. And it's a laser GPS camera system that they put it in drains and they map out below ground where the drain goes to. Um, but the drain has to be unplugged for it to work. And their truck does not have the ability to do that. But, but, but it is the necessary first step in the state then committing to take further action to replace it, which would fix everybody's problem, especially if they replace the existing 12-inch drain with something more suitable, like a 60-inch drain or whatever. I mean, it's the amount of water that comes through there is just insane um, right now. And since climate change and since um, the floods or whatever. So... And a lot of this also all goes back to um, the July floods that it, it has created. What used to be rocky stream bottom is now silt covered stream bottom. And um, it is completely exacerbated the existing situation that um, nothing, you know, silt is, it's all clay silt, it gums up, it sticks together. And that's why the thing is plugged in addition to the sticks, leaves, probably rocks. Um, so like there's hope on the horizon that the state is that they're sending a, their brand new expensive piece of equipment to map out where the drain goes, which nobody in town knows. Um, so uh, but there's also, you know, um, the emergency right now to deal with, which is to unplug it. Um, so, uh, you know, unfortunately, JS Ray could have come out yesterday, but I was really trying to get the state to do it on their own and they made two attempts um and they were unsuccessful because like as i said their own vacuum truck is down so uh and that in retrospect was the probably the wrong bet because if they come out today it's overtime they come out tomorrow it's overtime they said monday if they come out it's not overtime um but uh, which kind of surprised me because monday is a federal and state holiday but um, that's what Derek, the job foreman, said. 
Um, and he was the one with the operator of the piece of equipment that, that did come out here and looked at it all and gave the estimate of eight hours, 375 an hour. Um, plus, yeah. So that's, that is uh, in a nutshell where we're at as far as I can tell. Um, but it's, you know, the, the prospect of manning pumps, they're manning these transfer pumps and filling them with fuel every hour for the next uh, till Monday morning is terrifying to me. Um, I'm seriously sleep deprived as we speak, although I did have somebody helping me tonight for the first time in three nights. So, um, but um, the fire department has been great in the lending of their equipment. Um, and um, yeah, so Veronique, do you have anything to add to that sad, long tale of woe? Um. No, I mean, I haven't <laughs> spoken with anybody other than you about this, so I don't have any other, you know, anything else that I can add because I haven't spoken with DOT or anybody else. The only thing I, I wanted to mention, though, was didn't you say, Phil, that Greg's was recommended to you to do the job? Yeah, um, and I reached out to them three separate times and did not get a call back, so. Okay. Okay. Um, but but there's also the same person that recommended it to me said, you know, all they usually do is like poop filled drains and they probably have no interest in doing a drain that's not poop filled. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. That was that was uh, that was Bob Baker's theory. So. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Um, and uh, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions and talk I'm, about I'm this? I'm still just, I don't understand. I mean, I just don't get that there's a perfectly usable vacuum truck that is just sitting there that belongs to, to the DOT and yeah. they're not allowed to use it. That is, that is, that was my question exactly. Same exact wording to Mike. He, he's like, I know it makes no sense, but that's just, the regulations that we're, we can't use each other's equipment without a whole <clears throat> without a whole process is it a liability Boston. issue yeah i'm I, I didn't inquire further than that um but um it of course would have made perfect sense and to it, i was like well of course it makes so much sense of course the state's not going to do it so um <clears throat> i'm just wondering if it's something as easy as signing a piece of paper that says you know, we're asking you to perform this work. We won't sue if something goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, 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 he, he was like, it's a hard and fast rule and it applies to any equipment, not just that equipment. And it's just, um, you just get, they're, they're completely different entities, the different districts. And it's, um, that's all he would say. So what would Matt MassDOT normally do? in circumstances like this, like say there, there's some other, I don't know, there's a drain that's on 91 that desperately needs to be cleared and their truck is out of commission and it becomes, you know, like a, like a public transportation issue. Like, I mean, do, do I guess, like, do they have a backup plan where they can say, okay, this is out of commission. So we, so MassDOT hires a, a general contractor to come and do the work that they can't do because they don't have the right equipment. Yeah. So, uh, so apparently like those kinds of roads, the, the interstate has a whole separate contracting system where they have something contracted out already um, that's on standby in case of need, but we're not that. And that for them to use something like that here um, requires a contracting process, a bidding process. And there's no, um, you know, and that that's why uh, and he said the exact same thing is going on with a plug drain that is on the um, Ashfield Conway town line that is impacting 116 right there. That it's the same exact thing that they really need a, uh, a, a vacuum truck and they're unable to do it. So the water is just going across the road. And. Um, but it's not impacting anybody's homes or private property in any meaningful way. So there's not the same issues here. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, 
all I can say is I've been on the phone with them like nonstop for like 48 hours, just trying to get them to help. And the, the, the whole boss of bosses for that district, Mike Fabiano wants to help. And there's no doubt in my mind, he's doing everything he can, but he just can't get the vacuum truck for us on any reasonable time frame. was his exact quote. Has this drain ever been cleared before or has it, I mean, has, has the, has the blockage ever been as bad? And I guess my question, what I'm getting at is if, if, if we were to, you know, do this, spend whatever, five or $6,000 over the weekend, what guarantee is there that, you know, next time we have a massive rain, like in two weeks that, you know, we have to do the same thing again, because MassDOT still doesn't have a truck and we haven't done the engineering and. Or we don't have yeah. a way to stop the silt from going back in and blocking. Right. It exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the, all I can say to that is that there's never been a blockage since I've been here since 2010. It's never been clogged. Um, and, you know, occasionally the, the the inlet to the pipe is 12 inches. It's narrow enough that usually, you know, sometimes a log or something will get caught across its face and, you know, you, you just remove it and, you know, you maintain it, you rake it out, you shovel it out. You can fit a shovel head inside of it. Um, and you've always been able to remove things that would potentially cause a blockage. Um, but it's never been blocked before. But we've never, this is all part of, to, to me, the incredibly excessive rainfall that we've had, and which is unique um, in the town's history. So, um, so you know, um, the, the once it is unblocked, the the data that they get to show where it is um, should really help future. They're also going to be doing test borings every five feet to make sure that the real world um, uh, the pipe is exactly where the digital world says it is. And that, um, you know, because I, 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 I don't know, but I, what I do know is that the current situation is not tenable and that, um, it's just not tenable for for anything. So, um, um, you know, I thought I thought about putting like a some screen. I have like screen, like uh, extra screen doors, and just you know, duct taping it around the duct the, the inlet. Um, I, you know, I'm perfectly willing to do that once you can safely get access to it. Um, but. Um, so there's pretty simple solutions they could do, like a wedge at the bottom, like this, that pushes the silt and the rock away, and then a net over the pipe. So I, I, I mean, Eric, if you have more, I, I'm not trying to be a thorn in the side, but I do have plenty of questions. So I want to make sure you're asking your questions first. Yeah, I. That's um. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I obviously sympathize with you and your situation. I was over at your house. I saw how terrible it is. I just want to be cautious to the optics and sensitivity of the relationship and to the with you and the issue. So I keep on hearing that the fire departments has, you know, mentioned recommendations and what they feel would help, but you know, it's not really their expertise in water management and, and road repair issues. So I also just want to make sure that we're going at the recommendation of a qualified person, whether that be um, Mike Fabiano, somebody at MassDOT, so be it that they're the ones who are recommending the work. And then what they're saying, like, it, you know, is this gonna be a, a temporary fix? Um, do they think it actually will be a fix? Um, are they are they confident that it, it will actually be unblocked and allow the water flow to go through? Do they recommend that we do it today? Because after today, it doesn't go above freezing until not next Monday, but the following Monday. So we're looking at eight days until it gets above freezing at any point in time. So that's probably an issue, even with running water. Um, are we aware of any other households that have had similar issues or more severe issues with each rain event? So we're not making sure that, you know, we're opening a floodgate no pun intended, that the town will pay for repairs on personal property unless it's like a severe and special circumstance. Um, where the funds are coming from, uh, should this be coming through the highway department? Um, 
So uh, the, starting with the last one, I would suggest that, that the funds should be coming from the, uh, the, the flood remediation funding that's been previously appropriated by town meeting and not out of the highway department operating budget um, because it's all related. And um, it's, and the, the other, the, uh, about the setting a precedent for other aggrieved landowners, there's no other place in town that has anything remotely um, similar to this. And it's, you know, that where, where much of the problem is the result of water that was formerly on town roads and um, and debris that was on for formerly on town roads and um, and and that has 20 what what did the study say 24 separate um, properties that all drain into it uh, as well as I don't know how many acres and etc there's nothing similar to this where um, but the, the flip side of that is the sort of the unfairness of making private landowners uh, you know who basically uh, subsidize the operation of town stormwater management and it, there's this there's no other situation in town where somebody else is currently doing that are there any other properties that are being affected by this same issue the neighboring the when when oh, this this morning the neighbor you know when the stream was really really i mean it's completely crazy high right now but when it was over its banks it was it flooded the neighbor's basement this morning as well and it always does so it's it's always our two homes um and then the house right next to it between the, next to the post office um also got flooding this morning so so it, it's basically because that's the stream and it's basically the the three of us mo mostly i don't know about donna gilman um because she's on the low side of the southern side of Upper Baptist and the berm in front of her house was removed for the construction purposes. I, I assume that she has a wet basement as well, but I don't, I don't know. I know George Forcier has complained that, um, you know, that he has, you know, because of the, 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 um, the failure of, uh, of the stormwater, the town stormwater management in the town property in the triangle in front of his house that he has complained that, you know that that he's that his basement is wet you know from this storm and also from three or four days ago so it's not and i know Lori block has complained that her basement is uh really high and wet from you know, on both occasions as well i don't know more than that i haven't solicited further opinions than that but um you know th there there's no other th there's no other property that is that has these confluence of factors that point towards town responsibility um, on for multiple reasons so but and, and you know when the lawyer says that your base that your stream and you is functioning as part of the town stormwater management system right now then that's you know that means something and well um, i mean we, we did have a private homeowner who also had an attorney who's professional opinion was that the stormwater damage to her property was our was town responsibility and, so and, even though it's and, not and, the and, yeah I mean, they so, said so, it was another so, owner's responsibility though right right and and so so uh, i'll just address that really specifically because that the property the water that they were discussing as having you know gone into their basement was behind the vincese household on upper baptist hill road and what ron has done um, in what our highway department has done just within the past couple of weeks is um, lay a complete drainage pipe from the outlet at the side of the Vincese household. Formerly, that outlet just went onto the road. And then when it got to the low spot in front of Donna Gilman's house, it went down into her basement. And that was their specific complaint. Now that water has been channeled um, into the drainage ditch that um, past the house and that it's what I was discussing earlier that the, the that it's part of the, uh, the the north side of Upper Baptist Hill Road and it goes into the drainage 
um, uh, basin that is on the north side of Upper Baptist Hill Road between Lori Blocks and Donna Gilman's, and then it goes under the road directly to the downslope into uh, which ends up in the stream and affecting me and the neighbor um, and the two neighbors here directly. So Donna, th that specific problem that Donna has been cured for Donna Gilman, but the cure um, resulted in that problem just being transferred to me and the two neighbors here. It's not any long-term uh, solution. And this is part of, this is part of the whole sort of, uh, you know, inequities of it all. But um, I don't know. Does that answer the question at all? Yeah, I mean, it it, it does. And I, I, I understand that. I mean, that that makes perfect sense to me. But it, I just also worry about, um, I mean, I just, I, I think this does open a can of worms for people to, you know, retroactively say, well, you know, this, <laughs> so the, the, the town fixed, for, the, you know, to have the town pay for this particular remediation, and then have people say, well, you know, now the town should really be paying to replace my boiler because it's the fault of the town that my basement flooded. There were a lot of people that said a lot of rock and silt is all over my property and I want the town to come clean it up. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, and, you know, that, that, that is, I, I agree that all of that is accurate, that lots of people want someone else to clean up their basements, et cetera. That's not what we're talking about here, though. We're talking about the fixing of what is the, what our own lawyer said is right now part of the town waste uh, stormwater management system that is not functioning and causing damages. And it's just a narrower question. There, there is, there's always going to be people that want the town to help them out of their jam. You know, this is not, um, this is this is not any payment to you know any payment to any resident. It is the hiring of a contractor to fix what is part of, even though it is on private property, is now, even according to our own lawyer, part of the storm wastewater uh, storm part of the town stormwater management system, and it is not functioning and it is causing harm, and it it's um it's not sustainable at the way it is now. So for full transparency, I, I just let everybody on here know I, I talked to Donna Town Council also, and she did say, I'm just going to make sure I'm saying this correctly, that if the evidence of damage is being caused by the town failure to maintain the road, it is the town's liability to ensure that that gets fixed. And the way I see it, I don't think it's the town's failure in maintaining the road. I think it's the failure of a lot of things. The way the road was originally built, that when we do repairs, if we want to get um, recompensate or compensated for the repairs done by the state, that you can't upgrade and you have to repair the road as is. I think that's a terrible rule. But I do think, Phil, you are correct in stating that um the silt and everything that's coming down was obviously caused by stormwater and the drainage you know the 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 stormwater mitigation system just isn't working how it should because it wasn't originally built to handle the storms we've received um but, now but Chris, it, the stormwater management system for the roads is part of the maintenance of the roads those no, are i know separate. that's what i'm those saying i'm just saying i i don't think it's the failure of our highway department on the repairs they've done since the storm damage, I think there were issues far before that. Um, yeah. Also, another question would be, given the cost of this, whether it's 3000 to wait till Monday or 6000 to do today or tomorrow, um, do we, based on the, the sum total of the cost of repair, do we need to get three quotes? Mm -hmm. This isn't a capital crest, right? So I'm not sure how that would work. But, um, I, I, I need to look I, into the emergency procurement, but if it's an emergency situation and there has been a declaration of an emergency and an emergency meeting of the select board, I'm confident it would fall under that. So I can double check those, but I don't believe in that case. Um, it, 
especially since I'm sorry, my, my head's not even clear this morning. It's um, underneath. It's under the ten thousand dollars anyway. So that's best business practices. Sorry, okay. that's the answer. And, and, and there are not three providers of this service in our area. There yeah, is, I figured not, which would be, a, you know, an exemption. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, 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 to, you know, to, to, to me, like I, 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 I have a real hard time saying come out today if it's twice as much as coming out on Monday. I do. Like, I don't, I don't. Um, like that's a, the only, you know, but I, I have also a hard time, um, sleeping with, uh, the, uh, having to get up every 45 minutes through the night is just really, really a hard thing to do, but, yeah, um, that's a, ma that's a major hardship. <laughs> um, and, and the cost of fuel for the, for these generators is, is also, I'm up to like a hundred dollars already. And it's, um, it's something like $50 a day. It's costing, it's awful. Um, but, um. Uh, but the the pump the transfer pumps do work well and they are keeping further flooding or further you know loss of household systems at bay which is a good thing so like i'm okay waiting till monday i can deal like like i'm like it's going to be horrible but i can deal and it's if if the difference is like $3000 i can in good conscience like say come out and spend overtime doing this so like i would i would say come out monday and, and get that way we get the best price possible veronique did you mean to raise your simpsons hand i did yes <laughs> um is, is it okay if i ask a quick question of course so i just wanted to know did um since i haven't spoken with anybody from dot or the fire department for that matter did um Mr. Fabiano indicate that the town might be able to be reimbursed for the cost of doing this. Um, I didn't ask that question. I do not know. I, I, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's at all possible. I would definitely pursue that. Do, do they? It, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He's out of the office till. Tuesday, I guess now. I don't know. I don't have his cell phone number. You, so, you have Erica, to... what's what's your thought, Eric? I, I mean, it, what we're saying here is this repair is needed to prevent further damage. Right? Where what a lot of homeowners are stating, like with the rocks and their property and everything, that right. doesn't have anything to do with causing further damage. Right. No, I get that. I get and I um I mean, I like, you know, in, in theory, I really, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with this. I think it, especially given that this needs to happen in order to get that engineering study done so we can really understand what's going on in the, in the storm, in the drainage system. Um, but, you know, and, and, and I totally trust our, our, our town attorney as well. But when she said, you know, this is, this is okay because the property is effectively functioning as part of our stormwater management system. I feel like I want to hear that not from our attorney, who's not an engineer and not part of MassDOT. I think that's what um, I just, I, I mean, I want to have like a second opinion from <laughs> from an engineer who says, yes, this is this is true. It's basically part of, you know. The more yeah, every, every standard in my business practices, OSHA, whatever you want to call it, everything has to come from a qualified person. So that's why I keep stating, okay, if Mike Fabiano is that qualified person from MassDOT, great. I, you know, we have a great fire department, but I, right. I, you know, what are we supposed to say to that? <laughs> you know, so as long as it's a qualified person saying, hey, this needs to be done, this can be fixed, the money you're putting into this will help the situation, great. Um, but if it's, you know, our, our fire chief or somebody else, then I'm very nervous about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I fully trust our, our fire chief and our attorney for many things, but for, but, but something like this, I, like, I agree. I want kind of like an expert to weigh like in. The, the, so a, a lot of, so, I mean, in a perfect world, I, I would, I, I agree with that. The, you know, you can't get access to the drain to see whether it's going to, um, 
whether once unplugged, it will stay unplugged until you unplug it and see. Um, the And the, the other part of that is that you can, with your own eyes, just walk from the drainage outlet um, between Donna Gilman's and, um, and and Lori Blocks, just down the hill, see the the, the well formed, well articulated stream that starts at the outlet of the town stormwater drain, and the banks that are covered in silt and debris, and just walk straight down the hill, and you can see for yourself that that is the you know a primary cause um, of the current situation. And it's just visible, like it's just visible. There's no, you don't I, have to. Have, you don't feel have I to. totally hear you, but if I see a hole in a roof, I can point at the roof and say that there's a hole in the roof. It needs fixed. That doesn't mean I know how to fix it. So that's that's why I'm just saying if it's if this guy is the qualified person that says, hey, this is your issue. Why why you're getting flooding in these in these um um residences? Um, our recommendation is to pump it out and then see where we go from there, then by all means, I'm all about that. And I, I think if this wasn't an emergency situation and MassDOT said, we wanna do this you know, engineering analysis for you, but we can't because the drain is plugged and we can't unplug the drain because we don't have the truck and it's gonna take us 18 months to borrow a truck or you know get the truck fixed. And they told us at that point, you know, you guys are, are going to have to come up with the money to expedite the process to 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 clean the drain. I don't think I would have any issue in that situation at all. That, but I, but that I is exactly that is exactly what he's saying, though. That is exactly what he's saying. That, yeah, and I and I, I I mean I totally trust you. I just like I I've not spoken to Mike. <laughs> I haven't spoken to this guy, you know. And I and I realized that you know if, if I wanted to, I'd have to wait until Tuesday. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was I was communicating with Veronique all day yesterday about my conversations with him and you know um it you know I um you know theoretically she could have called and confirmed what I was what the communication was or whatever but he's um and uh the police chief also our police chief spoke to him as well uh, when he was parked in the driveway because the transfer pumps yesterday before the rain were I, we're putting the water directly across 116. And when the first mass dot crew came to try to unblock the plug, the police chief met them here because he's the one that called them um, because of the threat to the traveling public. And um, and he he was on the phone with Mike Fabiano as well. Um, and the you know, but uh, and then the police chief uh, asked me to. It, uh, use the fire department outlet uh, hose and and instead of diverting it to the road to divert it to the grate of the storm basin closest to the drainage ditch, uh, the drainage pipe uh, under 116. And so if you drive by now, you'll see a, the storm grate is lifted up by bricks so that the outlet hose can rest in there. And it is not going across the road. What's going across the road now is the other transfer pipe pumping water out of the basement. But that is uh, going to that is going down now, and it's another hour or two, and that'll be the problem. And, and you know, just as the private landowner, I have the appropriate equipment that once that drain is functioning as it always has functioned before, I have the appropriate equipment now um, to manage it, manage the situation. So and Phil, let me ask you something because I'm just looking at the weather now. Um, oh, so we're not supposed to get rain again, except maybe at noon today. After that, it might snow Tuesday. So let me just ask this: if we had to wait till Monday to make sure that the cost wasn't double on this. Once everything's pumped out of your basement, the flow right now should be a lot less, right? Correct. I'm sure it's going to increase at noon if it rains again. But after that, I'm, I would hope you don't have to keep on filling up the, the pumps. I would hope at some point it pumps everything out um, by the end of the day. Yeah, what, what does need to continue to be pumped out, though, is the stream itself, because it goes nowhere. You can't, it, 
if you do not keep the pump going for that, then um, it will eventually, even even when it is reduced to a trickle, it will eventually flood your basement. And so that the the pump now does need to, um, you know, that particular transfer pump needs to be um, uh, maintained going uh, uh, until until it is unplugged. It also needs to be running so that they can unplug it. You know, with the vacuum truck, they can't get in there when it's six feet deep. Right. Um, and that's the fire department's pump that's running right now? Yes. One one is owned by me, and the much bigger, much better one is owned by the fire department. But but the one I have is, is using the stream because I have it adapted for dirty water. And um, are you having to pay for the fuel for both of these? That is correct. Is it diesel or just gas? It's gas. It's gas, and it's uh, they're thirsty. Bill, and did you did and, you and tell me that DOT is coming back on Tuesday? They are coming on Tuesday. That's already confirmed, and they're coming nine a.m. with their big with a, their big new fancy vehicle with the whole crew, et cetera, et cetera, and they'll be here all day. Um, pr presumably, pr presuming that it's unclogged, unplugged. So they're coming in the anticipation that the other company will have unplugged it by then. Correct. Okay. Uh, this this shit is complicated. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I mean, your involvement just makes it even more complicated, to exactly. be honest. Exactly. You know? So. Um, exactly. And uh, I, I regret profoundly my involvement. Um, how dare yeah. you live where you live? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Erica, Phil's going to have to recuse himself from the rest of this conversation. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. I'm, okay. So, the, the, the DOT wants to come out on Tuesday, hoping it's going to be unclogged by then. It's an eight hour job. The difference between an eight hour job this weekend and an eight hour job on Monday is almost double. And, right? yeah. And I, and I do have the, uh, the text from Derek, the foreman at JSA, JS Ray saying that the the weather forecast for Monday is favorable. They would prefer doing it Monday rather than today when the rain is still fresh and the flow coming down the hill is still so high. Um, so uh, that he, that it would be bad. The, the battle, he's, the, the exact quote would be, the battle is twice as hard today as it would be Monday. Okay. So, um, well, I mean, you just, you just put yourself in a hole there, buddy. Um, yeah, I know. I know, but, that, but, uh, you know, but you know, uh, to to be consistent, I'm always the person saying that get someone else to pay for it in the town, get it as cheap as possible. And if you know, if the cost of that is my own health and sanity, you know, honestly, I'm halfway halfway crazy already. So it's well, I think Eric and I agree with that. <laughs> so, so what I, I what I would say to you, Eric, is I I do think this needs to be done. Um, we could argue about the um relationship with our chair and the job that needs to be done and what the town should be responsible for and what they shouldn't I, it is part of the flood management system whether it's on personal property or not that pipe itself is town property um i it erica i would say that we wait till monday so this isn't a, a job that's going to cost double and then I would ask the citizen that lives at this residence that they do their part just to make sure that once this is pumped through to keep checking it and making sure more silt and rock don't get into the pipe um, until some, a better um, management system can be in play. In, in play. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And like I said, if this, if this were a non-emergency situation and this were not <laughs> someone that we were, <laughs> had this complicated relationship with, it it would, it would kind of be a no brainer, I think to me, I'd say, yeah, obviously this is, you know, this is part of the stormwater management and it's something that we need to take care of, especially if that's the first step in order to having a really thorough understanding of how to fix the problem. And Veronique and Phil, I think we do need um, in writing the qualified person, like I said, um, to just basically state Mike Fabiano, hey, this, this is my job. This is who I work for, MassDOT. 
qualifications, I recommend that this be done to mitigate further damages to the town. Um, I think that would be absolutely necessary. Um, but if we're going to I mean, put up for vote, um, I, I can yeah. tell you that he said almost exactly that. Um, okay. Uh, you know, but I yeah, just don't can just get that in writing. I mean, I'll be happy to sign anything saying he said that to me, but, uh, like I, he's not, I don't have his cell phone number. And no, I know I'm just saying when he's back out there, right on Monday or whenever he's out there, be, if he can write be, an email. They'll be, yeah. They'll be out here Tuesday. Yep. All right, Eric, uh, um, I will make a motion to approve funding for Monday. Uh, uh, let me just get this right. For Monday, um, vacuum pump truck repair on the pipe that is clogged with road silt to um, prevent further um, flooding damage to uh, personal and town property. Um, I'll second that. All right. So that has been passed. No, you got to vote it. Sorry. But oh, oh um, uh, I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, Chris Waldo. Thank you. Yep, names. Hi, <laughs> Eric Coleman. <laughs> and just so you all are aware of the process, um, this meeting will have to be discussed and the vote confirmed at a future publicly posted meeting. Okay. Which is on Tuesday, right? Tuesday. So that's perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, I mean, I will, I will communicate with the for Derek, the foreman of JS Ray that um, the bill will be paid, which is, which was their big concern. So I, you know, that's why this meeting was called because I was unable to confirm that the bill would be paid until we had this a meeting and a vote by the eligible select board members. Um, and uh, okay. they'll, be, they'll be here Monday and the state will be here Tuesday. Um, and which is the beginning of a process that the state it, it apparently will be remedying this once and for all. So, which is a really good thing. And we've been trying to do that for since July. So, and I'll, if I'm around Monday, I'll just come down as well. Great. 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 I mean, I would say thank you, but that might or may not be appropriate. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, move to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Phil thanks everybody for joining right last minute. So yeah. um, we'll reconvene on Tuesday, Veronique, so we can, um, um, you know, do the vote again and, and on and uh, the public meeting. Uh, Perfect. Veronique, is there anything else we need to discuss? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, uh, All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya.